Hey, what's going on everyone? Jace Two Cents here. And recently in the video that I did where I showed you my buddy's water cooling loop, I kind of took you along on a real quick, high level, dirty, uh, undervolting of the Intel CPU so that we could get the 13900K temperature somewhat under control. And many of you said, Jay, please do a full tutorial on XTU. Well, I'm not gonna do a full tutorial on the extreme tuning utility by Intel, but I will give you enough information so that you can start going in and tuning your voltage and not have to worry about all the extra fluff that's in that application so that you can get your temperatures under control uh, without too much confusion. EK Waterblock's Nucleus Series AIOs are a closed loop and maintenance free way to keep your CPU nice and cool for maximum performance. Compatible with the latest Intel and AMD CPUs, the Nucleus AIO comes in both the Lux Edition featuring ARGB lighting, as well as a dark version for a clean, light free aesthetic and an ultra clean look. Daisy chain fans allow for a super easy install, while the thicker cold plate provides an improved cooling experience versus the competitors. To see the full list of specs and sizes, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so first things first, this is gonna apply to any Intel CPU, basically, well, I think like eighth gen and newer should potentially work for it. Uh, anyway, 10th gen and newer are gonna have a whole different feature set, so keep that in mind. This is a 12900K. 12900K is very similar to a 13900K, um, also runs very, very warm, but what you're gonna see is definitely going to apply. So there's a few things we need to do. One, um, it doesn't matter what motherboard or BIOS you're running, you want to make sure that your stuff is as close to factory as possible, because what we don't want is the motherboard and the software sort of conflicting, because XTU takes place in an operating system level, uh, whereas obviously any sort of tweaks that you made at the BIOS is gonna happen at a BIOS level. So we don't want any of that kind of conflict happening. Now, ASUS loves to do various things by default. So remove all limits. We're gonna go ahead and set this, actually I'm gonna leave it at remove all limits because we still, by undervolting, can get ourselves a pretty healthy overclock without having to have the negative drawback of temperatures going along with it. Um, I'm gonna leave my XMP enabled because I want my uh, RAM speed to continue going up as far as possible. But I'm gonna turn off the AI optimized. More, usually I'll run AI optimized on our test benches when we do our gaming tests because we wanna remove as much CPU bottleneck as possible when we're doing GPU testing. However, for this instance, I'm going to be leaving it at auto because of the fact that I do not want the BIOS handling the way the cores uh, operate. I want XTU or extreme tuning utility, the Intel utility to do that for me. So that's the only thing I'm gonna change right there. The other thing I might do is um, just some fan stuff. So if your fans are not running full speed or they're not ramping up, you can control that in your BIOS if they're plugged into your motherboard. Right now, the CPU fan profile is set to standard. I'm gonna put it at turbo and I'm gonna raise the minimum RPM to 600 because again, as we are dealing with overclocks and voltages and stuff, although we're trying to reduce voltage for better temperatures, we don't want to have our temperatures be impacted by our cooler underperforming. So that's the other thing you need to make sure. I am running an EK Waterblocks um, 360 AIO on this, the Nucleus AIO. This is the dark, it has no RGB lights or anything on it. That is all I'm changing right there. So obviously you guys are gonna need to download the Intel uh, X2 utility. I'm not gonna put a link down in the description and I don't wanna accidentally DDoS any sort of servers that are hosting that file. So you guys can Google XTU or Intel XTU on your own and download that. The other thing is that I'm going to be doing my particular temperature stress testing in Cinebench uh, R23. And the reason why I'm using R23 is the fact that it's an AVX instruction set that is extremely demanding on the CPU. And I look at it this way. If we can get our temperatures under control in a looping Cinebench scenario, then I'm not gonna deal with any issues when it comes to games or any of my day-to-day -day tasks when it comes to the computer because Cinebench is gonna put a much more uh, invasive load on the CPU than anything regular day-to-day -day operations could possibly do uh, to our CPU. So anyway, with that said, the BIOS has now got itself set as I put it. I need to go ahead and install XTU. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll come back with our initial Hi, we'll come back with our initial baseline testing to see where we're at and where we're gonna land. All right, so I've got XTU installed. You need to right click run as administrator for the installation and you'll get an error. Remember, this is installing something that directly connects to like the freaking microcode of the CPU. So uh, you might also run into something saying that uh, it couldn't proceed because of virtualization based uh, security. So 
If you are running into that error and you don't know whether or not you have it enabled, you can just type uh, sysinfo and you can come down here to virtualization based security. Mine's not enabled. This might be enabled in your BIOS. If it is enabled in your BIOS, you have to look up your particular motherboard brand to find out how to disable that. And then you'll have to go into Windows Defender to actually disable it inside the OS as well. But you can also just look up a Google search of how to disable virtualized based security or virtualization based security so that you can proceed. If that is enabled, you will not be able to install XTU because of the fact that you're basically being blocked. And this has to do with like the old Spectre and Meltdown and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, moving on. All right, so the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or the XTU is a pretty simple GUI or graphics user interface based software or application that allows you to tell your CPU what to do. Now, one of the things that I love about XTU is the fact that it has a built-in failure detectability. So it knows if something you did caused uh, the, the OS to crash or the CPU to crash, and what'll happen is it won't reapply those settings on a restart. If you apply something wrong in the BIOS, most BIOS have a fail safe where it will detect that it has a failed boot multiple times, and then it will revert on its own. But not all of them do. The nice thing about XTU is it will work every time. So this is one of the reasons why I like dealing with XTU. Anyway, uh, no, I do not want to participate in your program, Intel. First things first, dark mode. I hate light mode. It's I'm a, we all are PC nerds. We like dark caves and maybe some like, I don't know, electronic music playing and you know, hack the world or hack the planet. Now, most of what we're gonna do is actually gonna be right here in the basic setting. There's also an automatic overclock, which we'll play around with a little bit here. Um, but because we went in and disabled the all sync all cores, if you guys hear banging, they're like working on our roof. I can't do anything about that, but I'm not gonna stop. I'm moving forward here. We're gonna play around with the voltage and the voltage is what's most important to us. But if you have any of those sync all cores or AI overclocking enabled in the BIOS, those particular settings that have applied will show up in here. This won't revert those back to factory. So that's one of the reasons why we go with factory. That way we're not dealing with, well, are we crashing because of BIOS or XTU? You just take out any of those equations. Um, what I wanna know first of all though, is what are our temperatures like right now without touching anything. I also wanna know what are my voltages going up to. Another piece of software that I highly recommend, although you can pretty much see everything in XTU, is gonna be a pro piece of software called CPUID HW Monitor or Hardware Monitor. Hardware Monitor basically gives you a snapshot of everything happening in your system. Anything reporting anything is visible here in Hardware Monitor. So this will allow me to see what the frequencies are going up to, what are the E cores, the P cores, what are their temps, what are their voltages, what are their max, what's their average, all of that. So right now I can see that my P cores, one or zero through seven, because this is an eight P core CPU, are running at five gigahertz. And our E cores are running uh, between 3.8 and four, maybe 3.9, depending on the load. The other thing we'll be kind of checking here is going to be the vid or uh, vid max. This is our voltage to our cores. Now this is gonna be something that typically will dynamically adjust based on the core, because one of the ways that the new architectures work on all CPUs, AMD and Intel included, is it's able to identify what the best cores are. So those cores, will boost up higher than the lower ranking cores and those cores that are boosting higher might need more voltage to do it. So you don't want to apply a single voltage across the board because then what you're doing is you're gimping the better cores and you're probably applying more voltage to the bad cores than they need. So you just end up with higher temperatures that are completely unnecessary. With that said, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and run our multi-core just one time right now to see what our temperature spikes up to. We're at 66 C on the package and we're running at 210 watts right now. I think right now we might be running much more efficient because remember how I took off the auto overclock and the sync all cores and all that stuff? So out of the box, these temperatures aren't that bad. I feel like I should have plopped in a 13900K. Now, if we look at our vid, the reason why the temperatures are so good is under load, they were sitting in the mid 1.2s. So core performance, performance core ratio, I'm gonna, I agree, I'm taking the risks. I'm gonna bump that up. Let's try 5.2 all core. The error occurred while applying these values, individual values. Huh, I can't apply the, let me see what happens right now though if I run this. Oh, it applied the voltages though. Yeah, now we're at 84C, it applied them. Now for some reason when I applied the 52X multiplier on the performance cores, it gave me an error unknown. 
I honestly have never seen that, but it is applying by the way. And one of the things we're gonna be able to tell with the, app, with the applying is that the uh, temperatures and the voltages immediately went up because the motherboard is identifying like, oh, we have a logic built in that says at this frequency, we should have this kind of voltage and that's a sliding scale. So as the frequency goes up, the voltage goes with it. Unfortunately, most motherboard companies err on the side of caution and caution being stability over temperatures because they'll rely on Intel's uh, thermal velocity boost to say, hey, we're too hot, let's bring the temperatures back down. So it just cranks the voltage up as high as it thinks it needs to go for stability. That's when you start to see throttling because you're overvolting way more than you need. So now that I've applied a 5.2 or 52 times multiplier, so we're at 5.2 gigahertz to our P cores only, E cores and P cores are separate, Let's see what kind of effect we had. So we went from a 25,989. The fans immediately ramp up. Our voltage is nearly 1.4 volts. Our package temperature jumped to 87 at the max, 88 at the max. And our P cores are sitting in the mid to low 80s. Temperature wise, we're still great. But I know for a fact we're pushing more voltage than we need. But I want to see just by upping the P cores, what kind of performance uplift did we get? So we went from a 25,000 and some change to a 27,000 and some change. So by literally clicking, going one, two, click apply, we've gotten a performance uplift. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Don't want to spec it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems designed to fit your needs and budget. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT BLD Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Before I start messing with the voltages, I want to see how far we can really push are all core. Now when I hit apply, we're probably gonna get that error again. Yeah, see it's an error occurred, but it applied. So I'm just gonna ignore that for this video. This is the only time I've ever seen that error, but they are applying by the way. All right, let's run it again. So 27,504, we're absolutely hitting 5.3. Now we're at 96C on the, 97, 98, and 100C on one on core five. So core number five is probably our best core, to be honest. So we hit 100C. And as we do that, we actually didn't throttle. We stayed at 5.3 in those cores the entire time. I don't know how well you can see it, but 5.3 on the P cores the entire time. But our voltage jumped to 1.47, 1.475. Now we did jump up to a 28,367, but unfortunately, as you can see, 100 megahertz had applied another 100 millivolts. That's way too much. This is where I could say we could try 5.4, the problem is it's now gonna thermal throttle if I do that because of the fact that it's gonna push the voltage probably into the 1.5 territory, which means now we're gonna be dealing with more voltage than is safe or comfortable, especially for the cooling solution that we have, and we're gonna thermal throttle, which means we won't even know if it was stable anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave that at 5.3, but I'm gonna go ahead now and click core voltage offset. What that offset is gonna do, we can go negative, which means under load, reduce our voltage, which is what we wanna do. By, and I like to use a performance offset. That way when we're clicking around and doing things here in low load, meaning the cores are going up, right? If I, if I move my mouse or I open an application, the cores will fire up to the 5.3 gigahertz that I have them set to right now. But under low load, if the voltage is too low, the high clock speed and the lower voltage can lead to a crash. So I tend to leave it as a negative offset for performance, which means under full load, drop the voltage. And that's for temperature reasons. Now, that might sound like something that's a little bit more uh, crash prone, but the other part of this that we haven't even talked about yet is load line calibration, which is basically where you have either a droop or an added voltage depending on the load. We're not even gonna talk about that today. This is, that's more advanced overclocking stuff. That isn't what I'm trying to show you guys today. So I'm gonna start with a minus 25 millivolt. Start the test and see what my volt, my temperatures and voltage does this time. So now we've dropped 25. But look at the temp, by 25 millivolts, we are in the low 90s now. And not a single core has hit red yet. But I think we just got a crash. So this is the downside about 12th gen, by the way. 13th gen goes a lot farther on the, on the core, like clock, up near six gigahertz. See, the application exited unexpectedly. This may be due to a platform instability. If your system supports watchdog functionality, it may have been reset to default settings. Continue for your overclocks. So everything's back to where we were. Now, if we go into settings here 
and I click advanced options, we can have it um, restore tuning after reboot. So once we know we're stable, we can click that. Just have a pen and paper or a notepad in your phone or something and take notes as to what settings are you're at, or have a spreadsheet if you're a nerd like I am. So I'm gonna go back to 5.2 because I know 5.2 will run basically all day long. I'm gonna go back to the minus 25 millivolts. But you guys saw how 25 millivolts immediately on the temperatures was a huge reduction of temperatures. At 13th gen on my friend Brian's build, I think I ended up at like a minus 125 millivolts because this CPU was asking for way more voltage. Well, I should say the motherboard was supplying the CPU with way more voltage than it needed to get the job done. So anyway, we're back to 5.2, minus 25 right now. So our package is at 81C. Our cores are in the upper 70s, low 80s. E cores are still unaffected, we haven't touched them. So we'll be doing E cores separately. And our score, if you remember, went from a 28,000, then we'd lost a little, 27,591, because the P cores definitely they pick up a huge load of the, the job being done in Cinebench. So I'm not gonna drop the minus or the, the offset anymore yet, because I now need to see where we can get our E cores to. I'm pretty sure, and we only hit 1.372 volts on that, that minus 25. Because remember, we're offsetting the logic the motherboard is applying to the voltage, to the frequency. So remember at 5.3, it was going 1.45 volts, and I did a minus 25, and so it went 1.425. The reason why now it's at 1.373 is because at 5.2, it was asking for 1.4. So we're minusing 25 millivolts from 1.4. It's not, it, it's a minus from whatever that slider is. Now the difference too is you could go in here and you could set a static voltage. But I don't like static voltages for the reasons I already explained. So that's my logic behind it. Your revolt, your, your revolts, you, you might revolt against what I'm saying and your mileage may also vary. So if I get it right on the edge of P-Cores and then we up, we up the demand from the E-Core voltage wise, now we might not have enough and then our temperatures are gonna go up. Because with the E-Core temps right now, we're going up 300 megahertz, we should see another package increase. All right, so there, 83C, our P-Cores haven't really changed, mid 80s to lower, or uh, mid 80s to high 70s, and our E-Cores are now running four gigs, as you can see. So we should see a pretty decent si uh, scale increase now in our score. From a 27,591, we'll probably back up into the 28,000s, Nope, 27,566, didn't really change. Although we did get our four, our 300 megahertz that we asked out of the E-Cores. Can we do 4.3 in the E-Cores? I think we're, we might be asking a lot of it here. One more time. That should potentially get us to the 28,000. Oh, see, there's a soft crash. And a soft crash means it was just enough for it to make a, a math error and it corrected itself before it completely Stuff. itself. Which means now 4.3 is gonna be a little bit much. This is where you have to start deciding. We know for a fact Cinebench uses way more power and way more heat generating calculation than games and general tasks on your computer are gonna be. So we could choose now, offset 20 millivolts instead of 25 to see if that improves it, or we drop back our, uh, our frequency 100 megahertz. I'm gonna try going the minus, or the minus 20 instead of minus 25, only because we had temperature headroom. Remember, about 105C is where we're gonna see major throttling happening with our CPU. We hit 88 as in package temp high, and our hottest core was also 88C. So we got a lot of headroom. I'm okay with that because of the fact that when I'm done and I load up a game, you guys will see a completely different temperature than what we're seeing in Cinebench. It will be way, way lower than that. There's a 28,171. I feel like we were just on the edge of voltage before and you'd be surprised what five millivolts would do. This is one of the biggest problems with when folks chart, start trying to overclock and play around with their voltages is they make too big of an adjustment. They'll just crank that knob up or down. Literally small ticks and change is all you need. In fact, if you, right now it's set to five millivolt increments that we could change it by. You could go into the software and change it to one millivolt. And you can tune it down to that granular level if you want to. Temperature-wise, E cores are in the mid to low 70s. P cores are in the mid 80s with our core number one maxing out at 76. Clearly, that's one of our best cores. So now that I'm comfortable with these settings, I'm gonna go ahead and click the button that says Restore After Reboot. And uh, let's just fire up a game. I guess Cyberpunk? 
seem to use that game a lot. I'm only loading up Cyberpunk because it has a big world, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to, and it has a lot of AI people running around and cars and things, and the CPU's doing more than just, hey GPU, what do you got going on? You know, it's doing stuff. All right, so here's our, our CPU core temps right here on the left. You can tell where the P cores and E cores start and stop, right? So CPU one through nine technically is P core or E core, but well, P core and E core in a game like this actually trades off very, very well. So let me turn this down. I just want to show you now. Yeah, I mean, look at these temperatures. While gaming, we're also, I believe right now in our bottleneck setting. Yeah, we are in our bottleneck setting. We, we have it set right now when we were doing our bottleneck video. We're at 1080p medium. So we're putting even more load on the CPU. So let me go ahead and bump this up to 4K. There we go. Hey, look at that, we can see it all now. And as you can see too, we're just, we're pretty much getting the entire overclock we applied. It says 5179 and 5283. That's just showing one boost bin, basically, turbo bin below. It, that's just the way it's reporting. But yeah, check it out. We are locked at our frequencies we set and look at those temperatures while gaming. Now, if we had not gone in and done any sort of voltage tuning, this would probably be sitting in the 70s. So we've seen that multiple times where the CPUs just for whatever reason, well, I know what the reason, again, it's stability. They, they're just relying on the safeguards to keep the CPUs from melting to death uh, and applying way more voltage than is actually necessary. So anyway, there you go, guys. You guys wanted an XTU. Uh, I'm just, that's like I'm driving in LA traffic here. You guys wanted an XTU. Oh, okay. You wanted an XTU guide. There's a basic one. Uh, if you know any tips and tricks regarding XTU that maybe I didn't cover in this video that you think would be useful to someone, uh, comment down below. As always, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Look at those tires. Get over here. <laughs> However, because again, and where we're gonna land.